crowd. Okay, I'm Keith DeWeese. This is my son, Ellis. Uh, I have been involved in farming all of my life. I worked for the post office for 32 years, retired as a postmaster in 2012, and up until about 2014, I ran about a 50 to 60 uh, beef cow herd. Uh, started baling some bales of hay for my own. Uh, you're going to have to put up with another crazy horse person like Krista was talking about. Uh, I'm a team roper. My wife is a barrel racer. So we kind of know some of the quirks that the horse people are looking for. So we, we understand all that. Uh, I started baling hay for myself. And I was a big orchard grass man back then. That's, that's what I really liked to feed my horses. Uh, I had several friends that bought some orchard grass hay from me, and they suggested, you know, maybe you ought to go into the uh, hay business. So we bought a little bit better equipment. And the next year, we'd done about 1,200 bales. Uh, about two years after that, we got up to about 2,500. And I think this last year, we put up about 13,000 bales. Uh, we primarily raise mostly alfalfa, raise timothy, orchard grass, and we do raise some teff. Uh, teff grass is really a good hay for like what she was talking about for the low sugar diabetic horses. Uh, a lot of zoos feed the teff hay because they have diabetic animals in the zoo. Uh, the alfalfa, I mean, it's challenging. Very challenging. Uh, Mother Nature is a big driver. You know, sometimes it just depends on luck. You know, the weather may force you to bail it a little earlier than what you'd like to. We put preservative on our hay. Uh, you know, get better quality, less leaf loss if you've got a little bit more moisture in it. Uh, I'll get on here now and let Ellis tell you a little bit about some of the things that, that he does. He's, he's the marketing guru. He's the one that likes to be on the internet, so he can tell you about some things about him. And we'll, uh, so this is for the recording. <laughs> you're, you're getting that. So where's the clicker? Your dad had it, but he wasn't using it for some reason. <laughs> he put it on there. He put it on there. He got, I think, Al Bauer and Timothy both from it. Right here. All right, everybody can hear me? I'm Ellis. Let me get the slide here. That's our Stefan's accumulator. We, uh, we should have went through it earlier, but it's all right. But here we are, selling hay. All right. <clears throat> it's not as... Uh, you may have to bear with me. I've been getting over a cold and uh, not feeling too good right now. So anyways, uh, selling hay, getting the word out is uh, not going to be as hard as you think it would be. Because uh, we, we went over it before earlier. Uh, a lovely lady brought it up and about making quality hay. If you make quality hay, it's pretty easy to sell. And, but there's a, there was a gentleman in the crowd that brought it up about that beautiful green color. And we do all these hay tests, hay tests, hay tests, hay tests. And most of the time, it's they want that green color. So if you can put that 
uh, on Facebook, it'll sell pretty quick. You know, if you've got a customer that actually has um, a working horses, they're going to want the hay test. So hay test is still good. Uh, Facebook, I know some of you are probably going to be making a cringe face on Facebook because sometimes you have those... Uh, Facebook farmers that know everything. <laughs> and they're going to tell you that uh, you're doing everything wrong and they're doing everything right. And <clears throat> that's fine. You sometimes you've got to put up with it if you want to move your hay fast. It's been a really good, it's been really good for us. I mean, it's, we've, over the past couple of years, Facebook, social media has just exploded our hay sales. It's, it's kind of unreal how fast we've been able to sell hay. Um, of course, everybody knows about the drought we had. And the drought actually happened in you know, southern states, too. And we had um, people calling us to, to send hay down there at a higher price because they, just, they needed hay. I'm not saying that you should gouge or anything, but I'm just saying that it was, hey, I, I, need, I need this hay sent to me. What's the price? And you're probably wondering why I have that green picture there again and a hay test sitting right next to it. I'm not trying to just beat a dead horse here, but this hay test right here, probably can't see it, but that hay test right there, RFV was 192, crude protein 25. And the hay was the first cut in the hay, and it was kind of bleached out brown. Didn't want it. They want the green, green color. Now, do I? We had some stables that do the AQHA pleasure horses. They want high protein hay. Send it to me because it's still got leaf. It's still, it's still, still, the bales are still full of leaf. We want it. We know that the green color does not make say it's quality hay. So I know the gist of this was uh, one good idea that would make your hay sales better. And I know this might sound kind of corny, but I think one good idea for selling hay is just being honest. And telling your customers exactly what you have. We have been able to use Facebook in our, of course I don't have it on me, but my, I got a, you know, the, the latest Android phone with best cameras on it. Um, I take videos of the hay in the barn, videos of the hay when we bail it, and I send it to my other, my, other, if my new customers out of state. Uh, we've had people, um, from Louisiana, that's never ever, I never met, I never met them before. And they'll buy semi loads of hay from us just because I'm able to send them so many videos, pictures, and when they get it, it's exactly what, what I sent them. So I just think the one good idea is just being honest about your product, and you'll be able to sell your hay. Thank you.
Yeah, just to, just to say a couple of little more things. Uh, the picture on the right was when Will came and they had done some testing on our farm. Both, well, both pictures are from that. But uh, I know most of you all here probably do this, but we've got a lot of resources available to us that are basically free. I mean, we've got a great county agent in Tom Miller. He is very accessible and gets any information we need anytime we need it. I've got a very good seed dealer in Jesse Raymer. He gives us a lot of advice. Uh, the UK Research Center, Dr. Toich is just, just amazing. I mean, sometimes he may get tired of me calling him. I don't know. But using those resources, the, the main reason we test our hay, and Kim Fields is just wonderful to work with, that's mostly for our knowledge because those hay tests will tell you a lot of what you're, maybe what you're doing too much of or not enough of. And utilizing all these resources together, that's my point of, of one good idea to help better our product. I guess that's all I've got to say, so thank you.